Hey guys, Jamie Yotis here with The Chef's Connection, and I'm super excited because I have Nigella and Anthony sitting here with me. We're gonna talk all about the taste. So you're both executive producers, which I mm. find fascinating because you're also, you're, you're there and you're the judges, you're the mentors, but you also have a little bit of a, you, you have a say in like the mm. twist in the realms. Mm. Do you ever use that, that executive producer card? It's not about producing the card. It's about being involved really before we start filming, when, we, when we're thinking about uh, who the guest mentors are going to be. And we're there at meetings every single day. So it isn't, like, it isn't about using it as, as if it's just something, as you say, like, but it's not like using a card because we are there in that capacity all the time. Right. Yeah, and I, I think it. that's also because in what we do otherwise, we drive our own projects. Mm -hmm. So we're not really used to being, um, in a sense, a hired hand. We're not used to to, to doing what we're t what we're told. You like to just you like to be the boss. I, I actually I don't like to be a boss. I just like to be the boss of me. Well, I like to make sure there's good snacks in my trailer, and for this reason. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what the card is for. The snacks. <laughs> you know, I, you know, the idea. I, I could never do anything when someone gave me like a script or told me what to do. Mm -hmm. So as long as we we can do what we feel is right for us. Right. And I feel that's that's incredibly the, the important. The guest judges, the guest mentors, and the the, the themes are really really important. Yeah. And and uh, I think. We, we both pay a lot of attention to those yeah. uh, during the pre-production. And now for you, that you, you were a chef, and what was your mm -hmm. aha moment, like when you really wanted to become a chef? Um, I saw my chef, I was a dishwasher, and I saw my chef having sex with a customer in the parking lot, and I thought, dude, I want to do that. <laughs> I heard that this was, this is what I heard. When you I, asked. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, but I heard it was a little bit more scandalous. I heard that it was a bride-to-be. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you got you're keeping the juiciness from us. A bride to be in the parking lot mm -hmm. with the chef. Mm -hmm. Was it her wedding day? It was her wedding day, and she was in her wedding gown, and her, the wedding party was assembled in the dining room. Um, oh my goodness! It was the '70s. It should be pointed out. You know, times are different. <laughs> a different, then. different time. But it was, uh, you know, I was 17, and that looked like this looked like a that looked like a, fun. <laughs> a professional, uh, a professional um, route, uh, the, the trajectory that I would like to right. follow. Uh, and and so you did. <laughs> now, I, any surprises? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> any surprises for the taste? There's always lots, always lots, a lot lots. Of surprises. And I'm sure you can't give anything away, but can you give us a sense of what to expect? Well, I think I'll tell you what I think is, you know, added something. Um, certainly, a lot of tension for us, which was this taste off element, which yeah. is new, which is that. At the, when we decide, you know, who should go home, it's actually now that's on a blind tasting too. So if you imagine, so the two uh, cooks who, or the contestants who are on the bottom, um, as it were, if you imagine they're in a really high pressure ping pong match mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they have to cook and their mentors are with them. Screaming. Screaming. Wailing. And also, of course, yeah, screaming or not. And... It's really touch and go because right to the end is the, it's it's a battle and actually it it is in a way everything else is tense and it is difficult but this is this is like going into some sort of uh, cage fight beyond the Thunderdome you know it's, it's <laughs> I call it the Thunderdome and and yeah. it's just horrendous I hated it I, I I did everything possible to avoid it I mean I think we all did because you. You have to stand there watching your teammate or teammates with fighting it out, right. and you can't do any. You can't taste the food. You can't touch the food. You can just stand there and watch in mute horror as they either do the right thing or maybe the wrong like thing. And it's, oh, it's really it's very difficult. It's Super. really, really tough, and the pressure was on. And uh, uh, look, just. I'm not saying that Ludo necessarily was in Thunderdome, but if he were, it would be a loud experience yeah, that one could be. hear miles away. Now, with these, with the mentees that you have, do you become close with them? Do you become friendly with them? Or sometimes you find out that you pick them and then you're like, oh, I actually don't know that we're going to mesh very well. <laughs> All of the above can happen. Yes. Uh, we have an expression was, on the yeah. show called, taste the crazy. <laughs> um, and there have been times when, you know, I, 
one should we like to think that we are at this point after a couple of years able to tell from a spoon blind whether the whoever prepared this dish has issues that might lead to personality disciplinary <laughs> Law enforcement problems later. <laughs> that would be quite. <laughs> that'd be quite a talent. Tony, to do that. Tony has got quite that talent. You would be He's, hired on the FBI, or you know, he no, he he manages to step away from that. A behavioral research uh, unit. Uh, you know, <laughs> yes, I, I could taste. Food. Now that's a whole s new series. <laughs> I taste that's a whole. That a is hint a whole of homicide. New series. Study. Yeah. <laughs> taste arsony. Um, but but it's difficult. We do make friends. I uh, make, make friends is probably the wrong way of putting it. We do make connections with uh, cooks in, in, in other mentors teams as well. I was yes. say, do you ever say, oh, I, I really want to help this person. I They're not don't want to. Yes. Yeah. Do, yeah. We, do, uh, you don't want to send. There's also that we, there, there, it, it develops over time. You, you recognize weaknesses in certain cooks, even on other teams. And the instinct should be to capitalize that on that and wait for them or hope for them to fail. But in fact, you feel protective as mm. you, the more you get right. to know them. You know, people who want to cook well are generally good people. Right. You know, and already. And they're really trying. And also, in the end, the thing is, we want, we do want the best cook to win. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, but as, it, as it gets very much towards the end, you start having a feeling of which cook you find the most interesting because, uh, and who you really feel has got something special mm -hmm. now you can't suddenly start uh talking down that particular contestant right. because he or she is not in your team that's right. not how we feel about food if anything you, you, you grow noble. to respect yeah. them and another thing that's great about this is that you can be a home cook you know you could be a mom in your kitchen cooking all day and then go to become a, a contestant on the show mm -hmm. and be competing with someone who's been in a kitchen for 20 years let's it, say it's worth mentioning that the winners of the first two seasons of The Taste up against some pretty spectacular professional season professional chefs. Uh, the winners of the first two seasons, no, neither of them was a professional chef. One was a, 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 a private cook um, and, one was and the other stylist. was a food stylist and they not only won but they won fair and square by preparing the best tastiest food. And you can honestly say that because it's a blind taste test. So And and I think uh, you know, you have plenty of opportunities to fail on the way to that mm. moment. So um, you know, it says something about a, a person as a cook that they make it all the way. And I think yeah. one of the interesting things about the show is that the prof when professionals fail the reasons that they do fail are always really intriguing because they tend to overthink mm -hmm. or overreach mm -hmm. or, or, or try to dazzle in a way that tends yeah. to blow back on them. Whereas the, the home cook who stand a little closer to, uh, to what they know and feel comfortable with and, and this desire to sort of nurture and, and, and who, who are less likely to lose sight of who they're cooking for right. uh, in yeah. some ways have an advantage. So if someone is cooking for you, what is a taste that you tend to gravitate towards? Give me mom's meatloaf. Anybody's mom's meatloaf. And I'm a, I'm pretty, I'm, you know, I'm yours. You're satisfied mm -hmm. with that. Okay, I yeah. think, you, you see, that's the thing. I think it really is about authenticity. Because we can, we like what we like, but, but when you eat food, something that comes out of a particular culture or a particular home or, it, it's like someone's voice. You, if someone is talking to you and you think they're a bit phony, it's somehow y you don't you can't really, right. you can't warm to what they're saying even <laughs> though it may be interesting it could maybe someone else's very interesting idea mm -hmm. but it, somehow it doesn't feel right and the same way with food is like is, is a voice as well cooking is a voice so that you have to feel it's someone's real voice at this point I think you can, when, when food comes out that's sort of pretentious you can eat I can sense the other judges, the, the hostility rising from mm. from the other judges. Yeah, but then if it's really incredible, then you you don't care. I mean, but, and I have to say, I thought this season the food was really, you yeah. know, everyone you know, often says this about each season, oh, the food was really better, but the food was really better. We did have really quite a lot of contestants who could have won and could have been very noble victors. So, we uh, all I think we all have. It, it, it's funny as I've gotten to know my fellow judges, taste better. Um, we we all are soft touches for certain things. Like Nigella, 
if it's a sweet dessert, but there's salty notes, uh, <laughs> and it's not too sweet, if they have restrained in the sweetness, and maybe even a little touch of salinity, uh, Nigella generally is very, you know, well disposed towards that. Um, and sourness and savory, yeah. I like. So I like um, sour and bitter. Ludo, anything you know, super classic French that reminds him of his childhood, <laughs> and meat spicy. Salt. If it's really yeah. spicy, like painfully. Tear yeah, if smoke spicy, comes out of his ears just, when he eats, uh, or he's anything happy. at this point, anything like Thai or Vietnamese, like everybody, all the other judges immediately, well, they'll taste yeah. it, and they'll look over and, and Marcus, say, "Don't Marcus, even say it," you know. They, Marcus, I, I always it. feel that you know, Marcus loves a bit of it. I always think there's something pickled. He, he his spam. He loves he spam. Knows it. I feel enough. no. I feel that Marcus, has, you know, his again, his voice comes out also in what he likes in other people because he likes something which has maybe the the heartiness of his Ethiopian roots and the sprightliness of his Swedish uh, roots so that you can always tell there's a there's a, there's a yin yang thing going on the food he likes having said that you you know someone could do all that someone could make us each our favorite notions of food but unless the cook has done it well then it's actually going to offend us more right. than if it was that you know then then the, the, so you cannot try you can't think oh, what does that person really like now i wouldn't go out of my way to cook something for someone i know they really hated right. but you can't try and please it's a bit like writing you you've got to try and please by pleasing yourself first you know right um, and also there's so certain i'm a person who believes in absolute good and evil you know, a good spaghetti bolognese is a, is a, is a thing of beauty and wonder, a, a simple good thing. A bad spaghetti bolognese is a, is a sin against God and an abomination that must be eradicated from the earth along with whoever was associated with it. That is quite the sin. <laughs> Well, thank you both so <laughs> yes, very much. <laughs> Let's end on a high note. Yeah, this yeah is, this that's is a high note. That's Let's great. head over to the Olive Garden and straighten them out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you both so very much oh, for taking the time you. out to chat with us here yeah. at The Chef's Connection. And for more from your very favorite chefs, keep on coming back to chefsconnection.com. Mm -hmm.